Get 24 hours of unlimited access to the lynda.com online training library completely for free. Stay tuned to the end of the podcast to find out how. Welcome to the lynda.com video training podcast for Friday, November 14th, 2008. This is episode 137. This week, learn how to use the quick selection tool to mask out the background of a photo in Photoshop CS4 with a movie from Photoshop CS4 for photographers with Chris Orwig. Hi, I'm Derek Chow, and this is the lynda.com video training podcast, bringing you incredibly useful tips and tricks from our latest tutorials. This week, we're taking a look at a clip from one of our most popular authors' brand new title, Photoshop CS4 for Photographers with Chris Orwig. This is an essential course for all digital photographers who want to not only master Photoshop's vast array of image enhancement tools, but who also want to become more passionate about their work. Using his own compelling images, Chris demonstrates how to work with raw images, how to use curves and levels to make your images pop, how to enhance bland photographs by converting them to black and white, how to clean up and fix damaged images, and much, much more. In the following excerpt from Photoshop CS4 for Photographers, Chris shows you how to create a mask with the Quick Selection tool. Welcome to the chapter on selections. In the Photoshop community, there's the same. You have to select before you can correct. And the better that you can get at selections, the better you'll be at corrections. So we're gonna learn some valuable things in this chapter. And we're gonna start off by talking about the Quick Select tool. Now this Quick Select tool was first introduced in Photoshop CS3. It's now part of CS4. It's a phenomenal tool. You'll be using it all the time. All right, well, let's go ahead and select the file that we're gonna work on, Annika.psd. Double click that one to open it up in Photoshop. I have to go to full screen view mode, spacebar, reposition the image. Now you can select the quick select tool by way of shortcut. It's the W key, or you can click on it in the tools panel here. All right, well, now that we have quick select, here's what we're going to do. We're going to make our brush size a little bit bigger because I'm interested in selecting the background and making this background a solid color. Now, because I'm going to select a large area, I want to use a pretty big brush. So I'm going to press the right bracket key, and that's going to increase my brush size. Then I'm going to go ahead and click and paint or click and drag around the edge of the background. Now up here my brush is a little bit too big, so I'm going to decrease the size, press the left bracket key, then I'm going to go ahead to continue to click and drag. You notice that as I'm clicking and dragging, it's finding the edge for me. It's finding the area of contrast, except for this little white corner down here. Zoom in on that, Command Plus on a Mac, Control Plus on a PC. Press the space bar to reposition, and let's move it over there, okay? Then left bracket key, I'm just going to get a nice small brush. And all I'm trying to do here is illustrate this idea that your brush size will help you get into different detail areas. Now let's say that we're working around our image. In this case, I'm holding down the space bar key to move around the image. And I notice that there's a problem. I'll create one. It went in too far. So I selected part of the fleece jacket. I don't want that. Here's the way you can fix it. On a Mac, press Option. On a PC, press Alt. It changes the plus icon in the middle of your brush there to a minus icon. We'll now minus that or subtract that away. Perfect. Double click the zoom tool, take it back to 100%. All right, well, the next thing that we need to do is to refine our edge. Now, in order to refine the edge, we need to choose one of the selection tools like the quick select tool or the lasso tool or the marquee tool, but I'll just choose quick select and then press refine edge. Now, when I press refine edge, I can all of a sudden see the edge of this particular selection and I can see that in this case with this red ruby lith overlay. Now there are a number of different options here. I can see the whole image, I can see it as a mask, I can see it on a white background, or I can invert that and see it the other way. But let's go back to this red ruby lith overlay. Now when I do that, I notice that, you know what, my selection is extended too far out. And it's extended too far out because of this particular contract setting that it remembered from when I previously used this menu. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase that. And then when I bring it up real high, you can see that I'm going inside of that edge even a little bit further. Now, I don't want to go inside of it. I want to get it right on that edge. That looks good. Increase the contrast, radius just a touch, smooth it out. Feathering, how much transition do I want there? Well, not too much of a transition because it's going to be on a new color in the background. I think that looks nice. Click OK. And now I have a new selection on that background. Now, if that selection isn't good enough, I can go in and fix it some more. Again, I'm going to do that by way of Refine Edge. Yet rather than show you Refine Edge here, I want to show you it another place. Okay, well now I want to change the background. So I'm going to go to click on the Add Adjustment Layer icon, and I'm going to choose Solid Color. Now when I choose a solid color, in this case black, I can begin to see the edge here. And I say, okay, that looks pretty good. Let's make this white so we can see it in this white format. It'll help us see 
a little bit of the problem that we have here. Click OK to apply that. All right, now that I apply that, I notice it looks pretty good, except I have a few little areas where I can see the blue, and I wish this was just a little bit tighter. Well, how can I modify that? I'll click in the mask. I'll then navigate to my masks panel, and I'm going to choose mask edge. Refine what? The mask edge. Interesting. It's the same exact dialog as we saw before. Now here what I can do is change the contract and expand so I can bring this in or out. I'm going to go ahead and bring that out just a little bit. And then I will increase the contrast of that edge. I want it to be a little bit more hard. And I can view this a number of different ways. Red Ruby with overlay, just the image itself. That would be really helpful, right? So I can see how far the selection extends into the background or not. So I'm going to bring that edge in. Just trying to get some of those small little pieces of blue off, which I was able to remove there. Smooth that out just a touch just a touch of feathering. Now a lot of times when you're doing this it's kind of tricky because of the marching ants. What you can do is press Command H on a Mac, Control H on a PC to hide those. Again, that's a really important shortcut. Write that one down. Command H on a Mac, Control H on a PC. Bring them back. Then I can also click on my preview before and after. And here you can see that all I've done, these little edges down here, I just brought that in a little bit further. Now that I've seen that I realize it's a little bit too harsh so I'm going to try to smooth things out just a touch here. Make that a little bit more natural and click OK. All right, let's look at our before and after. Here's the before and then the after. Looks pretty good. I can then double click on the color icon there and I can choose a new color for that background. And I want to just check out a couple of different colors to make sure that my background is looking good. That is, I'll go back to white and then click OK to apply that. So in summary, in this movie, we looked at how we can use the quick select tool in combination with the refine edge option. And then we create a mask and then we refine the edge of the mask. So one of the things that you can see here is you're going to start to use these different selection tools in combination with some of the other features inside of Photoshop. All right, I want to take one more quick look at the quick selection tool, and we're going to do that in the next movie. See you then. With an incredible 15 hours of movies all aimed at using Photoshop from a digital photographer's perspective, Photoshop CS4 for photographers will have you making your photos look their absolute best. To see more from this or any of our hundreds of other training titles, visit us at movielibrary.lynda.com where you can check out more free samples or get complete access to our entire library for subscription rates starting at just $25 per month. And I also want to mention that next week from November 16th through the 19th, lynda.com will be at Adobe Max in San Francisco. If you're planning on attending this annual Adobe event for designers, developers, and business decision makers, be sure to stop by our booth, number 402, to check out our latest products, sign up for a free giveaway, or just say hi. For more information on Adobe Max 2008, visit max.adobe.com. And I'll be back next week with another lynda.com video training podcast. Until then, I'm Garrick Chow, and from everyone at lynda.com, thanks for watching, and happy learning. For a free 24-hour all-access pass to the lynda.com online training library, visit lynda.com slash podcast slash 137.